Professor Gunter Nimtz has stunned the world of physics. In his laboratory at the University of Cologne in Germany, he has broken the ultimate speed limit, the speed of light, the first hurdle in the race to travel through time. Professor Nimtz achieved it thanks to a curious phenomenon known as quantum tunneling. It's another loophole in the laws which govern the universe, once which allows particles of light to somehow sidestep the barriers of time and space. Nimtz's triumph lies in getting those light particles to carry information. He encodes music onto a laser beam and points it at the barrier. When the light particles or photons arrive at the other side, the music they carry can still be decoded and played. Nimtz claims he has sent music in this way at almost five times the speed of light. We were extremely embarrassed when we saw this on a Sunday morning that our signals are moving faster than the velocity of light and we went to some colleagues, to two colleagues from the theoretical department and showed it to them and they were all though excited by this result. The question now is how far can these findings take us? And what types of information could we send? If only we could send ourselves in place of music, then we too could overcome time. Traveling back to witness our own birth, or watch ourselves as children. Turning our bodies into data may prove difficult, if not impossible. But beaming our minds through time and space could get us closer to our dream of time travel. If that doesn't work, there may be one more amazing loophole that will. In San Francisco, physicist Dr. Jack Safardi wants to turn the whole idea around. Rather than taking our bodies to times and places we want to experience, he believes the first way we'll achieve time travel will be by bringing information from other times and places to us. We have to really understand what mind and consciousness is as a physical phenomenon before we can even think of traveling through time, before we can even think of building uh, warp drive starships to get there bodily. Dr. Sarfati believes the means of understanding consciousness and achieving time travel will come from a computer chip modeled on human brain cells. He calls it the Q-chip and says it would be conscious just like a human being. Devices using Q-chips would be uh, time machines in the sense that interface with the human brain. Uh, you'd be able to experience uh, other time, you know, information from other times, other places. Dr. Sarfati believes that with the power of the Q-chip, we could select destinations for virtual visits as easily as we now change channels on the television set. It's going to be like virtual reality, but so good that you can't distinguish it from real reality. You know, it's basically we're talking about virtual reality, uh, but where it's, you're actually projected on, you know, to, to different places, different times. Through the Q-chip, we could communicate telepathically with any mind from the past or the future, even our own. We'd have a solution to the paralleled universe dilemma that leaves time travelers trapped body and soul with a one-way ticket in the world they've come to visit. There'd be no risk of the dangerous crushing gravity of speed travel. Time travel may still sound like an impossible dream. But if, as David Deutsch says, the laws of physics don't forbid it, then maybe we can develop the means to turn that dream into a reality. It may come by engineering wormholes, navigating parallel universes, or traversing history with a Q-chip. Either way, science says that we may one day have the choice to jump through that gateway. It's going to take us to the stars. We're going to make Star Trek real. So, I mean, this is, to me, this is certainly a positive, optimistic vision for the 21st century. Let's start, let's start doing it, you know. <laughs>